Welcome to season three of Love at First Shot. I'm your host, Natalie Foster. And I'm Julie Golub, captain of Team Smith & Wesson and your head trainer. Here at Love at First Shot, our goal is to help you find your place in the wide world of guns. This season, we're shifting our focus to three young ladies, Erin, Jasmine, and Natalie. They're all relatively new to shooting, and they've all got a goal they're chasing as their next step in firearms. Over the next few weeks, I'll be working with these ladies to help set them up for success to achieve these goals. I've reached out to experienced friends and trusted instructors to help mentor them along the way, and we'll be tackling training plans specific to their interests in hunting, personal protection, and competition. And I'll walk through this journey with them to discuss the lifestyle and cultural elements of becoming a gun owner. And of course, the responsibility we all have to be a positive representation of the gun community. This season is all about taking that love at first shot experience and turning it into a passion that you share with others, which is what we hope to see as these ladies bring their friends along with them. Exactly, so let's get right to it and meet these lovely ladies, shall we? Let's do it. This is Love at First Shot, sponsored by Smith & Wesson. Erin spent the past four years in Washington, D.C., where gun control is a hot-button topic and law-abiding gun owners are heavily restricted. But now she's packing up her life and moving to a place where guns are talked about in an entirely different way, Dallas, Texas. Erin's background in fly fishing has already planted the seed for her love of the outdoors, and she'll expand that when she goes on her first hunt. Erin is the newest shooter of the bunch, having only shot a gun one other time. That first experience didn't go well, but Julie is about to change that. Erin. Hi. So nice to so meet good you. to finally meet you. Welcome to Texas. Thank you. Great I, to be here. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I understand you have a little bit of experience with shooting. Yes. I shot a handgun one time. One time. Yep. And it wasn't the best. Not the best at all. Well, we're going to start you out on a completely different platform. We're going to not even deal with handguns today. We're going to okay. go straight into rifles. And we're going to do it with an AR-15. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know you probably heard about them on the news and everything yes. else. But one of the reasons why I've chosen this particular firearm mm -hmm. is the fact that it is so easy to set up to you. Really? And it's a ton of fun. Okay. Here we are. This is an MP15 22 Sport. Okay. Okay. All right. So you're going to hold it. Okay. You ready? Yes. All right. Now you're going to put it to your shoulder. Okay. Just like so. Now to see the sights, mm -hmm. you're going to have to put your cheek on the stock. Just like that, yeah? So already I can tell yeah. that this needs to be a little bit longer, okay? See how easy there it is to There we go, that makes more sense. Now okay. do you see the, where the, yes. the post is? Yes. Everything lines up? Yep. All right, you look awesome. Do I? You I do. the part, okay. You do. I have never seen an AR-15 before. I've heard the notoriety of an AR-15. You know, I was very nervous, saw the gun, still very nervous and then I kind of saw the gun up close and I started talking and learning about the gun and I think the learning about it tamed that fear a little bit. You know when Erin saw what she was shooting for the first time I could see that like what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> we soon found that it really wasn't that scary and a ton of fun. All right so we're gonna load one in there. That's a little bullet. It is it's very tiny. Okay. I don't this is what we call yet. a 20 you don't want to touch it? I'm gonna make you touch it. <laughs> okay fine. It's a 22 caliber. Okay. So that is the size of the hole it will make on the target. Hmm. Get in that good position for me. All right. And you get to pick whatever target bullseye that you want to shoot at. I would recommend the middle the one. The biggest one, one I think. And then simply line up the sights and slowly squeeze the trigger when you see everything. All right, I'm going to do it. All right, do it. I hit the target. You did. <laughs> How did it feel? Not as scary as I think I was anticipating. Exactly. It's just this nice, light poof of yeah. happiness. Yeah. It was like a little. And you did. You're just like two inches out of the center. I know. I'm like, well, that's not close enough. That's not the target. I didn't hit the bullseye. Well, do you want to hit the bullseye? Yes. All right, let's do that. I saw that. <laughs> oh, you got it out. Yep. Second shot. I know. You knew it too. That's a bullseye. I know. But the important thing to remember is see all of these shots. That's what we call a good group. You ready to do some let's more like position work? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that next. Jasmine is a Dallas blogger who loves all things fashion, travel, and lifestyle. She's grown up around guns and doesn't fear other people carrying them. Her nerves come when she's the one in charge of the firearm. 
Now that she's a gun owner, thanks to a gift from her fiance, Jasmine is ready to take the next step to learn how to become proficient at handling and carrying a firearm so she can protect herself because she knows all too well that your safety is never guaranteed. I was attending a formal event in Oklahoma with my boyfriend at the time. And so we drove out to Oklahoma, had an amazing weekend. On that Sunday, I dropped him off in Arlington. But when I hopped in my car to drive back to Fort Worth, I quickly realized my car was on E. So without thinking twice, I pulled off I-30 and went to the first gas station I saw. I swiped my card and was filling gas. And at that time, a truck pulled into this gas station. And I immediately had a terrible feeling. This truck had blocked the exit of the gas station. A man walks out and beelines it to where I am. I was so nervous and in such a panic that I knew I needed to leave. So I hop into my car and quickly hit the lock button. I then realized I had hit unlock. Panic took over me. I was granted a spare second and hit lock as this man is at my door trying to open it. He realized that he was not getting into my car and without any nervousness in his demeanor, he turned around and walked back to the truck. They were blocking my exit to get out, so I flipped a Yui and got out the way I came in. And at this point, this truck is now following me on the freeway. My entire body was trembling and shaking as I'm trying to drive 30 miles an hour on this freeway in the pouring rain as I'm being tailed by this truck and these two men. And I call for 911. As I'm on the phone with 911, at some point this truck finally exits and stops following me on the freeway. I was very blessed in this situation to A, somehow make it back to Fort Worth on a gas tank that was on empty, and B, to make it back unharmed. I think this is really important to talk about because the reality is there's so many women out there for whom a scary situation has, you know, really impacted their lives dramatically. Right. And so I'm I'm so glad that you're, you've come along with us on this journey because you're representing so many of those women who are, Thank you. you know, they may not get the opportunity to do this and they'll see your experience and go, okay, maybe I can do this too, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. A situation like that, it really did open my eyes um, I wouldn't say it completely changed my life. I would not say I live my life in fear, but it definitely has opened my eyes to kind of assess situations more. You said that you're really comfortable with your dad or your fiance mm -hmm. carrying a gun, but mm -hmm. not you. Yep. You're not there. That's <laughs> yeah. not for you, or maybe not yet, not yet. but <laughs> yeah, you're not confident with that. So, I mean, I find that if you're gonna carry a gun, then you are now responsible for not only yourself, but everyone around you's safety. And so if you're gonna carry it, then you have to know the ins and outs of it. And I just don't have the confidence with it yet. It's something that I take very seriously because it's now not only my life, but it's other people's lives. And that's something that you can't just take lightly. I love that perspective because it is so thoughtful. And I think it is truly representative of the way that gun owners do think. It's not even about legal liability, though that is a big factor. Yes. It's the ethical part. It's, yeah. the, it's the humanity. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, one part of concealed carry and that confidence that you're talking about is, you know, being grounded and realizing that there is the possibility that you may have to defend your life by taking someone else's. Mm -hmm. And it's not a fun reality. No. It, it's not something that we enjoy talking about, but I also know that that's real. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about that right now? That terrifies me. Um, it makes me very nervous to think about. Trying to wrap my head around it, I do realize that that is the absolute last resort that you have to go to. and. I mean, I can understand that sometimes that is the measure that you have to take, but it is the absolute final and last resort. Well, I think you've got a great mentality going into it, Thank and you. I can't wait to walk through this experience with you. So what do you say we get started? I'm ready, let's okay. do it. Natalie is used to being a woman in a man's world. Her career in the technology startup industry relies on her confidence to hold her own when she's the only woman in the room. 
Now she'll transition that confidence to another male-dominated arena, competitive shooting. Natalie grew up a Texas girl around guns, spending many of her weekends on the ranch shooting skeet. Competition shooting has always been something in the back of her mind. Now, with an excuse to give it a try and her friend Anna by her side, Natalie is heading to the US PSA Double Tap Championship, where she'll see what she's gotten herself into and meet her mentor, Randy Rogers. This is the first competition shoot that I've ever been to, and um, it was a little intimidating walking in at first. So when people come to watch for the first time, a lot of them tend to get really overwhelmed. We're out here in the elements. There's heat, there's sun, there's wind. It's a lot of walking, hundreds of people, and it's very noisy on top of it. Usually if we can get them to stay more than about 10 minutes, they'll get hooked on it because it's so much fun to watch. It's a little embarrassing being like obviously the new girl. So at first I was just kind of watching, uh, hanging back. Uh, after a little while, I started talking to a few people and they were very patient and explaining to me how people go through the courses, how uh, the different courses work, the, the rules. I'm Anna Kavinka. I actually met Natalie in college. I've gone with Natalie a couple times just out to the ranch. So to get to actually do something this legit <laughs> uh, and just get to experience all of it with her is I'm so excited. She's super patient. She's gonna be a great teacher, and I think it's gonna make our friendship even stronger. I think Natalie and Anna are gonna get a lot of confidence from this experience because there is nothing that makes you feel like a strong woman as going to your first match, completing your first stage, and high-fiving all your friends. I'm glad we came out here because if I were coming out for the first time to actually compete, I would have been so scared. Right. I was honestly kind of glad that we actually didn't do any shooting today because it was nice to be able to have the opportunity just to come and scope things out. You have to be an awesome trainer for me. <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> you described me as patient earlier and I almost laughed. I Maybe mean, your slight lack of patience and <laughs> my quick learning will like meet and be okay. <laughs> Hopefully. For sure. I'm excited. Me too. I, I'm ready to get out and do the range thing. I know. So the first target that I shot at was about 10 yards in front of me. And I got, you know, one or two rounds on that 10 yard target. After that, I was ready to have fun, ready to kind of start learning how to be a better shooter. You notice when you're holding the gun out there, you get a little fatigued. Yeah. While in kneeling, you can actually place your elbow on your knee. Okay. To make it a little bit easier. How's it feel? Good. All right, I'm gonna load you up with five. Okay. And this time, I want you to put one shot in each of the five circles. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Pretty easy, right? Mm-hmm. So we are on safe. Okay. Get in that good position. Did I miss? You did. All right, there you go. Nice. Okay. So you just had the one that didn't hit the bull, but you're all just a touch low. We know this gun is, shoots a little bit low for you, so we okay. can adjust the sights as we need to. Let's try to get you really focused on hitting the middle. Okay. There you go. All right, you're still, still low, all right? Okay. So what's happening is I think that as soon as you're taking the shot, mm -hmm. you're actually dipping the front of the muzzle down a little bit. Okay. So Keep what you have to remember back. is this finger comes straight back to your chest. Beautiful, that was perfect. Okay, Perfect. now we're gonna transition over to that red target over there, all the way down there. Okay. I wanna see how far you can hit. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> you did it, you I did, did it. it. That is a far shot with this gun. Wow. And your, that was your last shot even. Roxanne! I did that! <laughs> that is excellent. I, so I hit the bullseye and then I turned around and hit the steel. You did. Thank. I was not surprised at all at how well she shot. As soon as she hit that center bullseye on the target, I knew we could take it back to the steel. So I know you're gonna wanna take these targets home. Yes. But I have some homework for you. Okay. Okay, you're gonna be meeting up with an excellent mentor. Mm -hmm. Judy is fantastic. She's gonna set you up with your hunting rifle. You're gonna work with her. You're gonna do a little bit of homework with her. Okay. I'm gonna meet up with you in a couple weeks to okay. see how you progress. We're gonna move to some big calibers. All right. And it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna have lots of bullseyes to show you. I love that. I love <laughs> that. So until next time. All right. Thank awesome. you. No, this is great. <laughs>
I definitely feel much more at ease now that I'm looking forward to the, the hunting experience. I'm ready to really focus and, and start learning and really start running with this. Now that we've met our girls, I sat down with them to learn more about their backgrounds, their expectations, their hopes, their fears, and what lies ahead for each of them during their journey on Love at First Shot. So going into this, what do you think of when you think of a gun owner? The first thing that I think of is that very generic stereotype of a male with a gun. So you don't you don't think of a woman at all? Not, then that's like not off the top of my head. No. Yeah. I would say one thing I was a little bit surprised about since I started this was how many people who've approached me and said, I had no idea you, you shot guns too. <laughs> yeah, people come out of the woodwork, yeah, don't they? They're like, oh, come out okay. Of the woodwork. Really what you guys are gonna be, and you already are in some sense, is an ambassador for this mm -hmm. world as you step out on this journey. I think I'm just at a point with so much change in my life. I mean, I moved here from DC pretty much yesterday and this opportunity presented itself and I figured why not. People just pull out the extremes and don't really dive deep into the world and understand it from start to finish. And so I think that immersing yourself in the world, I think that that's when you're really fully able to make a fully informed decision. You know, I think you're putting voice to what a lot of people feel, especially as they're just getting into firearms. So you're all bringing a friend to walk this path along with you, and you're gonna be passing on the instruction that you receive. That's probably one of the things I'm most nervous for is just making sure I understand what I'm doing before I can explain to someone else. I read something once that said you don't really understand something until you can teach someone else. So I think that it'll really encourage me to practice even more than I would on my own, yeah. just so that I can give her the best experience also. So what are you looking forward to in this process? Well. My whole journey is more along safety, and I want to be able to protect myself. I know that I will have so much more confidence knowing that I can hit a target yeah. and that I'm good at it. I had a dream last night, actually, that I was already competitive shooting. So I think, like, <laughs> I'm raring to You're go. brave. Yeah. You're there. You're, You're like, like there. You're... I'm so glad to meet all of you girls, and I just can't wait to see how you guys and your first-timers come along on this journey, and I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for joining us, and uh, let's, let's get started. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're ready. So yeah. excited. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Next time on Love at First Shot. Getting back into this is something that I've been hesitant about, but I think I'll be under much better care. This is the proving ground where you can test and see things that you need to work on. All right, we're gonna do one more test. Don't let that fall down.